One of the greatest legends of cycling, facing possibly the toughest circuit in the history of the Cycling World Championships, Bernard Hinault, the Badger, exercised a brutal tyranny. Do you want to know what happened in Solange during the 1980 World Cycling Championship? Follow my wheel and I'll tell you. Today's story is about heroes, about cyclists who become bigger the greater the adversities, specifically about one, the great Britain legend, Bernard Hinault. And it's written that the best heroes have to excel in the greatest battles. And that's exactly what the Road Cycling World Championship in 1980 was. Solange became the most epic, tough, and demanding World Cup possibly of all time. This was due not only to the extreme hardness of its route, but to the tyranny exercised by the brutal Bernard Hinault, who, giving a display of power, he turned the race from beginning to end, turning it into a real hell for his rivals. A dominance and push rarely seen in one-day races. It took people to such an extreme that the Spaniard Juan Fernandez, who won the bronze medal, declared that it was the toughest race of his life. Only 15 runners finished out of the 107 who started the race. We all remember tough cycling world championships, but none as brutal as death race. August 31st, 1980. That's the date that was chosen for the test of Solange in France. The race consisted of a circuit that riders should give 20 laps with a small ascent to the Côte du Domancy of 2.7 kilometers at 8.6% average slope. That means 6,000 meters of positive slope, comparable to a very high mountain stage with mountains such as Tourmalet, Aspen, and some more. Crazy. It would be 20 climbs because the circuit was quite short, only 13,400 meters to complete a total of 286 kilometers. All cyclists feared, and rightly so, this world championship would only be within reach for legendary riders. Legendary cyclists, such as, of course, the Breton Bernard Hinault, the Frenchman declared that this exhibition was his most beautiful triumph, but was a merciless, brutal beauty, even more than the liege that he won that same year alone and on the verge of hyperthermia, and even more than the Paris-Roubaix that he would, months later, win dressed in the rainbow jersey to De Vlemic. This was Hinault with the phrase in which he defined himself. I run to win, not to please people. And the plan that day was none other than to race where, how, and when he wanted. As soon as the departure was announced, the Frenchman escaped out of the peloton with De Muinck, making clear what his intentions were, although they were soon absorbed by the peloton. Then Hinault waited for the second part of the race, the accumulated kilometers and the continuous ascents were going to be noticed sooner or later in the legs of the cyclists. The Badger just had to let them ripen. Natural selection was ongoing. It was from kilometer 160 when Hinault tightened the race. Only the Italian Baroncelli endured the changes of pace of the Frenchman, being aware at all times of the luck he would end up having until in the 20th step by the ascent to Domancy, with the road completely full of French fans who had come to see their great idol win. The French champion decided to give the final blow and walk alone towards the promised land. From that moment on, the outcome of the race was written. The Breton thus conquered his only world championship after an authentic exhibition of power as rarely seen, completely destroying all his rivals and dominating the test from start to finish in a circuit of extreme difficulty that we have rarely seen in the world championship. Behind, the Italian Gian Battista Baroncelli would win the silver medal. In the sprint for the last position of the podium, in what seemed an unequal fight between the great Belgian classicist and sprinter Roger de Vlamic and the Spanish Juan Fernandez, ended up becoming a joy for Spanish cycling, since the Grenadine clearly surpasses de Vlamic and then melts it in a sea of tears with his coach. So epic and so difficult was that distant World Cup of 1980 terrorized by a unique, exceptional, and unrepeatable cyclist in a route of inhumane conditions. If you liked the video, subscribe and click like. And if you want to continue enjoying World Cycling Championship stories, don't miss this.